All right, so here's the story. We got these steps outside the back porch, and they're crooked, they've settled, they're unlevel, and we just don't like them. We're gonna upgrade to some decking type steps. And one of the first obstacles we have to come overcome <coughs> is finding level on this rascal. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. I think you can see how it goes slanting down at an angle that way. It also has an angle going that way. So I have to compound cuts in order to get my supports level. And I have to be able to find a good starting point that's going to be level. You see that gap under the door? You can see it's settled several inches at least. And I have this little laser light which I had intended to use for this. I was going to turn it on and level it up and find level there and then I could measure down and get my measurements that way. However, in the house you can see it, but out here in the daylight you can't see it. So that's a no that's a no go. I'm gonna have to get out my good six foot level and just do it the old school way. So I'll be taking calculations and doing cuts. We've got all this lumber. That we're gonna be utilizing. And I'll show you more as it progresses. Woohoo! Alright, so several hours later, that's what I've got done. Uh, I had to custom calculate and cut each and every board due to the yaw and the wag of things. Slanting downhill this way, slanting downhill that way. And some of the boards, even though those are 2x12s, some of them I ended up having to shim up on this end. I think you can see there. I had to put a shim under it to get it up to level. And there comes the air conditioner, so I'm going to stop here. I got to screw all that together and then I can get on with it. There's my little helper for today. Izzy's hanging out with me. I know the air conditioner's running. I'm sorry about that. So I'll give you a quick sneak peek at what's going on in here. I've doubled these so my picture frame board can rest on it and so can my main flooring. And I had to cut all those out around that existing step. And each one was different measurements because of the way it had sag. And before any of you say, well, if it's sagging now, what's going to keep it from sagging more later well I have a feeling that this amount of sag which you can see where it's dropped has taken years and I'm hoping that this little step project will get me through 10 years you know by then the deck will probably need refreshed anyway so uh, I'm looking at it as being cheaper than tearing this all out and pouring new concrete because I can only imagine what that would cost and how much labor that would put me through. So anyway, now I gotta flip this up and put screws into the back side of those joists and then I can begin working on the top part of it. And then the next step will be just to repeat this down lower and screw it, toenail it into this one and then again at the bottom to make my final step. All right, enough chatter. Let's get on with it. I'm using East, slide, east Side Lumberyard Supply. I don't know, they're torch fit screws. These are two and a half inch long. And each little carton like this, it doesn't tell you how many screws are in there. It's a pound. And it comes with its own little driver. But I'm going to tell you what, the driver don't fit the screws or the dang. It slips out. I'll be surprised if I use up all these screws before that fit driver is ruined.
get the idea. I uh, know, it's starting to get dark, and this is where I got done. I still got to go around and screw everything down. But that's the general look of it. Let's have a better look. It's just going to be nice to come out here and not feel like you're going sideways. I can't believe how much time it's taken me to do that little bit. Alright, there's what I'm looking at first thing this morning. Alright, I'm going to take a moment and show you how I calculated my measurements so I could get everything level. And what I did to start out with, I used that six foot level and I just propped it up until I found level up against the house underneath the door and then what I did make sure you can see what I'm doing here is I took a straight edge and I propped it up and then I would measure down like this and I would write that measurement down. Then I'd move over to my next spot and repeat that. Let's do for an example. 10 and 3 quarters here. But over here. Thirteen and a half. So, and you just have to write that all down and then transfer it into your piece that you're going to be working with and cut accordingly. See, my next step is going to be 8 inch rise, which means I need to go 8 inches down from the top here. And this right here, 10 and 3 quarters, well, that would be two and three quarters down here and then whatever it is out here because this is different this way too anyway I think that kind of explains it it's a, it's a lot of work because each board is custom cut so I hope that helps explain to you how I went about doing this finding level and getting the boards cut right then after you've written down your measurements you get some gobbly gook that looks like this <laughs> yeah but it'll make sense to you as long as you keep track of what you're doing see I wrote down how many inches across I was taking my measurements at and then what it was up against the house and then what it was on the downward stroke and over here I was just I quit writing them down I was just transferring them immediately But now I'm starting to square one again, so I gotta start doing that all over again. I tell you, this is no joke. I spent all day, and this is all I've got to show for it. I'm about to run out of light. And once you turn the lights on around here, the bugs are so bad you can't stand to be out here. But it's close now. I put the border trim on, I don't even know what you call them, and then put the decking on top, and that level will be done. However, I don't think I'll finish it tonight. I'm running out of time too quick. All right, so you saw where I left off last night, kind of. I came out here this morning. I have to work today, but I had a few hours to work on it. And I was able to get these front boards on and get all the second tier steps cut and laid out. I got to screw them down yet, as you can see. And, uh, and then one more layer. And I got a couple tricks I want to show you as to how I'm calculating some of these weird angles. Hang on, we'll see if we can do that for you. I made this jig. And it's 9 inches from this lip to the end. And what that allows me to do... Now let me back up to the bottom tier. 
is I can hold that over and put a mark and then I'll know that that's where my next set of risers needs to go. And I can measure from here to there. And it'll be level all the way around since I've already got my level established. And then when I'm calculating for the angle that goes downward toward the house, I was using the level and I'm not going to get my level, but I'm going to show you. I'd set it up here and I'd make a mark. And then I'd pull the level up until the bubble was true. And make another mark. And then measure the distance in between those marks. And that would be how much I needed to take off back here. So, that might help you if you ever come across this kind of thing. And yes, we're getting a fine collection of scraps and bits. All right, so here's what's happening. I got sunburnt like 10 freaking tourists and to the point to where I couldn't sit, I couldn't stand my back. I just had my shirt off for two days. I heard the sun without realizing it and I got toasted. So I've waited till, I didn't do anything yesterday. I couldn't stand it. Just my shirt touching my back like, to, anyway, enough of that. Anyway, I've waited till the sun's getting shady out here. And I come back out here, and what I've done is I've taken a router to this edge, which will be the edge you, uh, on the outermost top step, which I went all around this on the outer edge. I just gave it a nice half round. And then I did this one and this one. You can see with the difference in color there. And of course, this piece here goes over there. And uh, cause you can't get the router up in the corners, up in that corner there or up against the house over there. So you wouldn't be able to get it all if you tried to do it with it on there. And what else here? I'm getting ready to screw these down. And while I've got them unscrewed, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact, well right here, my bottom step I think is gonna be three boards wide. So while I've got it here and I can see it, I can take advantage of this and pull a measurement from up here across the three boards to right here and I'll know exactly how long that board needs to be coming out this way which it does change especially on these angles like it'll be longer here in the corner and longer out there on the end where the 45 degree is than it will be right here in the center so I'll be able to cheat that way and go ahead and get those measurements real easy. So when I get ready to do that bottom tier, it'll just make it that much nicer. And I'm sorry for the wavy camera. I just wanted to shoot a little bit before I got to work. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of these screws in this second tier here. And, uh, and then we'll see what happens from there. I may wait till tomorrow to start working on the bottom tier, but I want to at least get these screwed down. And one of those hummingbird feeders dripped on it here. You can see it there. I moved it, but uh, I sanded that down a little bit, but it's going to need some more. And you can see where I did go over it with the sander and smoothed out some of the edges where they just weren't exactly right. So I got that part screwed down and the edges sanded everywhere. Got that hummingbird feeder drippage sanded down. I went around all the joints and where all the boards meet. In case some of the boards were twisted a little bit and it might stick up a little bit and I sanded them all down. You can see some lighter spots here and there where I hit it with the sander. There was a couple spots, one or two spots where I actually had to take the angle grinder with a 60 grit flapper wheel on it to break it down enough to where the little mouse finish sander would smooth it out. So anyway, yeah. All right, so here's how far we are at the moment. One more tier of top deck and 
Assembly will be done. Oh yeah, looking good. So, I'm taking a break here to talk to you. And uh, on some of my angles where I would normally use the speed square, like on my 45s, but they happen to be a little bit off for whatever reason, because I don't do this for a living. I have found that this is very helpful, and it's just a machinist angle finder, but I can put it in there wherever I need it to be and keep moving it until it fits right up to where I want it to be, and I can take this over to my lumber and transfer the mark, and uh, it's proven to be invaluable. Plus, if you want to find degrees, it's all incremented out, like, for example, over there would be 90s, but you see the piece laid on top, those are 45s. Over here in this corner, that should be a 45, however, I used the speed square on it and it was off just a hair, so that's where I used this, and it turned out, I don't know, I moved it now, but anyway, I was able to get it to where it's dead nut, and uh, this one right here in the center, these, that would be a 22 and a half because it's a 45 cut in half. So having this has really been a bonus for this kind of stuff, especially if your stuff is not exactly completely true. And even if they are, well, your standard skill saw doesn't have a setting for 22 and a half degrees. You have to guess at it. Well, again, you can use this. Put it up against your blade and up against your guard and it'll, it'll let you know right where you need to be. So I guess I'd share that with you. I'm currently preparing to cut these deck, top deck boards for this last tier. That's what I'm doing. I got that piece cut, that'll be there to match the picture frame, like on those. And you just saw I've got that end piece on. So now I gotta start running these pieces. And I'll get here, get them all three lined out, and draw one continuous mark across all three of them so they're all cut the same. And then I'll make the other ones from here back down to there where they butt up to that board. Oh yeah, that's where we're at. All right, so I got my miters all cut, my boards all positioned down on that end. And I come down here. where that 22 and a half degree angle is going to be. And in an effort to get my cut to look straight, this is what I'm going to do. Cut each one of them and screw these down, and that's fixed. So, now that I cut them, we go back, we place everything in place like it's going to be. Make sure the gaps, everything look good. Then we come over here. Oh, look at that. Oh, just look at it. Oh, yeah. I can live with that. So, before I screw anything down now, i got to get the router out and go around that outermost board on the edge and that farthest most board on its edge because I want that half round routered on all those outside boards. So yeah, I'm going to do that before I screw anything down. And I, I realize that I've been doing a lot of work off camera and uh, that's why I'm just showing you a couple of these steps here at the end before it's too late and I can't back up. There's been several times where I was like, oh, I should have showed them now. 
It's like when I was routering, you know, I should have showed you that. And uh, the way I cut that angle right there for that 22 and a half, it may not be a 22 and a half, but by doing it that way, the way I did it, they'll be straight. And when I butt my other boards up to it, they'll match. You know what I mean? So, yeah. All right. Don't be flipping off my friends. I did. All right. Not all the way. Could do that to him. <laughs> all right, now. There it is, all assembled. Still got to do a finished sand on it. And I also need to put up a handrail over there. Uh, our insurance company told us that. Uh, Anything with a more than a 24 inch drop had to have a handrail on it And I never did put one on there, so I'm gonna do it now I bought some I think they call them balusters and uh, It's pretty much pre-made handrail boards I'm just gonna screw them to the side over there and then I'll rip a piece of this five-quarter board and screw it to the top and probably router it off and uh, something to that effect I'll let you know when I get done what I did I hadn't really planned that far ahead yet except for that I know I needed to do it but anyway there it is in all its glory and I think Izzy likes it And then of course I'm going to have to stain it or water seal it or something. But that's for another day. <laughs> yeah, and there it is. I calculated my lumber pretty good. I got just enough five quarter board left to do the handrail. And I got two extra 12 foot 2 by 12s which I threw one on top of what I had accounted for. And I've actually got two half pieces. They're like five piece, five feet long laying there. So I got a little bit extra lumber that I didn't need, but better to have too much on the job site than not enough and have to go get more. Anyway, that's that. Yippers, I can live with that. I can sit out here and look at that, have my morning coffee, and not be cussing and sitting here thinking and plotting and creating plans in my head. <laughs> it's been a real challenge, but it's been fun too. I've enjoyed it. I don't know if you can tell by my face, but I got sunburned like 10 mofos out here doing this the other day. So it actually slowed me down a lot because there was a, a day and a half where I couldn't stand to move and I didn't touch it and then from then on I wouldn't come out here until it got shady out here in the evening and then the next thing I knew it would be dark 
and I couldn't see to do anything. So it really held me up. So it should have been a three day project. Turned out to be closer to a week. But anyway, got a big mess to clean up and finish my handrail. Got all this kindling, scrap bits, and sawdust. Some of this wood I'll be able to use for other projects. I think if I have enough left over, I'm going to take a piece of this decking board, the five quarter board, which is what I used on the top for the actual steps, and uh, put them in this swing for those cup holders that I was telling you about. I wanted a place to put my cup, and I think. I should be able to just screw them. This is flat surface here. Just cut them out to fit in here. Just drill a hole through there and run a screw from the backside into it. And also screw it into this post where it's level. And I think that'll work fine for a cup of coffee and uh, whatever else I might happen to have on my hands at the time. So we'll see if I have enough left over for that. The one piece I got left is 12 foot long, but look at the way it warped. Can you see that? Just laying out here in the hot sun. It looks like a ski. Anyway, I'm babbling. I'm getting off here and getting back to work. If I don't see you again in this video, thanks for stopping by. Hope it helped you out. Hope you enjoyed watching me do this. And uh, until later, cheers.